Hello darlings, welcome to another Goals and Wishes video. Ta-da! Yes, somehow we've made it to yet another year. Yet another year. How did that happen? That seemed to fly by that last one. Anyone else feel like that? Did 2023 just suddenly happen? Do I say this in every video? I think so. I, I have the feeling that the last year just suddenly happened to me, but then also a lot of things did actually happen to me in the last year. So there is that feeling. Um, but generally, whenever we've seen people over the Christmas and New Year period, and they've gone, hey, how was your last year? Because you know, I've been like, <gasps> <laughs> we didn't make a baby, which is a real downer of a way to start this video. So sorry about that for anyone joining for the first time. I tend to make goals and wishes videos at the start of every year because I, I think it's really good to look back on the year that has been and to look forwards um, onto the year ahead. I think it's a better to, to set yourself, better than setting yourself a hard and fast resolutions, but instead to kind of put out into the world your the wishes and hopes that you have the year ahead and maybe just some some casual goals that you would like to achieve, some of which sometimes happen. Yes. Um, and then we can all look back over what we uh, thought of last year. If you were watching last year, you can go back to the video from last year. How many times can I say last year? It's in the card here, but also linked in the description down below. And have a look to see whether the five things that you wrote down did come true for you. And we can all see whether the five things that I said <laughs> came true. And then uh, we will give our five hopes for 2024 and see how that goes. But before we begin with that, there is just one special thing that I wanted to talk to you about. If you follow me on Instagram at Jessica Out of the Closet, you may have seen my stories about the United Nations Population Fund. If not, let me tell you about UNFPA's No Matter What campaign and the incredible work they do to help pregnant people facing extreme crisis and war, providing them with essentials they need to give birth safely. Now, disclaimer, I have worked with the UN before, but this is not an advert. I am just sharing something that I think is important to be shared, uh, especially at this time. Um, in times of violence, it's sadly babies, those with young children and pregnant people who are nearly always the worst off. Essential healthcare services are often destroyed and that leaves many without basic essentials during or after birth. Imagine how horrific it would be having your baby in the midst of destruction. As of the 3rd of January, only 13 out of Gaza's 36 hospitals are even partially functional whilst operating at three times their capacity. In Gaza, around one in four of the population are women and girls of reproductive age with an estimated 5,500 pregnant people due to give birth within the next month. That is at least 180 babies being delivered every day. With our support, the UNFPA can help. So far, they've distributed reproductive health kits to seven hospitals across Gaza. The kits include clean delivery supplies, medical devices, and equipment for emergency birth care. UNFPA has also helped supply midwifery kits containing supplies for midwives to continue their life-saving work, as well as dignity kits containing hygiene supplies for women and girls living in shelters. It's so easy for us to help. Simply click the link in my description for the UNFPA website donation page. You can enter a custom amount and give whatever you feel comfortable sparing. Thank you so much for letting me take the time out of this video to share this with you. One of the reasons my past year probably felt like it flew by so quickly was seeing Rupert develop from being this little 18 month old who tossed around, um, was still occasionally willing to go in the buggy. Spoke in just like maybe two or, th or three words connected um, to now being a two and a half year old who asks me about the double meaning of the word jam and creates his own jokes about it and um, finds that hilarious. <laughs> he, he likes to um, pretend his foot is stuck and go, I'm in a jam. And you have to go, is it a jam or a jam? It's a sign for jam that you eat and jam that's a problem. It's a toddler joke. It works really well on the toddler. <laughs> it's his joke. And I am so grateful to have my little buddy. I love him so much. He is an absolute delight. I love that he does things like when we're having dinner, make us all hold hands and then go, family. 
I don't know where he picked that up from. Don't know why. <laughs> but I love it. Right, I'm just talking myself up into a good headspace now, I think. So let's look back at my goals and wishes from 2023 and see which of them came true and which of them didn't and whether there are going to be some that we might continue to work on this year. And now we come to goals for 2023. So it is no longer number six, but now number one. Hello, hi, and welcome to my new goals. So there you go, that's my first goal of uh, 2023. Hitting one million subscribers. Ah, why, yes, yes, that did come true. Woo hoo. This one was a kind of a funny one for me because <laughs> oh, it took it took a long time for those last 5,000 <laughs> to happen. It was a very slow climb from 990,000 to 995,000. That was, that was a very, that was a very slow, that was a painfully slow climb. <laughs> um, and then once I actually hit 1 million, I don't know what the algorithm's like, yeah, cool, just show her videos to people now. And yes, apparently after that it, it somehow started shooting up again. Very weird how the YouTube algorithm does that, but it's actually done that every time I've hit a big number. Like, it takes ages to get to that, that number that you wait for, and then it just, oh, <laughs> after that, you're like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> that was uh, it's much easier, this side of it. Hmm, interesting. I think for me mentally, the biggest thing about that has been that it happened just before the Christmas holiday, and then Christmas happened, and then I've just taken two weeks off. And it's been really lovely having two weeks off and feeling quite calm for the first time. Normally, as a self-employed person, when I take time off work, I don't generally feel very relaxed. And all self-employed people relate because you think, oh my goodness, oh, I should be doing something right now. Oh no, oh goodness, oh, the business needs me. Um, but I'm like, okay, I think it's, I think it's all right. I think it's to a point where things can tick over without without me for for two weeks even because I felt confident in it and that was really lovely that was that was nice um, and I'm going to be rethinking how I do my content in terms of what goes out when so uh, keep watching till later on when I do my goals and wishes for this year and I'll tell you a little bit more about when videos are going to be coming out and uh, what type of thing I'm thinking of doing. Number two, drum roll please. Ta da! Number two, we're going to Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, no, I made I made it number two of the goals and wishes. Well, we definitely did go to Malaysia, and we're going again. <laughs> However, this time we are going with more family members, and it is more of a family holiday. We are still going to be making some videos in Malaysia, but they will be released on more of a delay because there's only so much filming uh, that can get done and hastily edited to crop out children in a short amount of time is hard work. <laughs> Rupert's a performer. I, I'm, I mean, I'm delighted. We, we have a born performer for a child. He is 100% the child of my heart. Claudia's uh, baffled. <laughs> but yeah, he's me. Um, and every single night before bed, he does a full, full ballet performance involving, it also involves singing. So I guess ballerinas don't tend to sing whilst they do ballet, but you know, he's, he's just innovative that way. Oh, please correct me, by the way, if you know of ballerina who sings whilst performing. So we are actually going to Malaysia at the end of January, but videos will probably be started to be posted in mid-February. Going forwards, the plan is this year to try a bit of an experimental two videos one week, one video the next, two videos the next week, one video the next, two videos next week, one video the next, because I'd quite like to ramp up the production to getting to two videos a week, uh, long form videos, but keeping with three short form videos a week. And for those 
long form videos kind of taking more of what I am doing with the short form so still kind of queer history things and historical profiles but also things like book reviews which I really enjoy doing um, I'm just really into um, inclusive books for children like it's a it's a love of mine and also I think having more slots in a month having more spaces for videos available um, means that I can do things that are also a bit more topical so I can have the more structured um, scripted sit down things but then I can also throw in some oh let's quickly respond to this news thing that has just happened about disability stuff or a news thing that has just happened about LGBTQ plus stuff. I'll see how that goes, a little experimental. But yeah, so it should be by the end of the year or halfway through the year doing two videos a week. But right now on the two, then one, then two, then one, then two, then one. Three for 2023. Claudia masters sign language. A big goal, a big goal, we're all aware. I mean, Rupert's sign language is still better than hers, but Lingvano is really helping, so that's good. Number four, find a hot beverage I like other than Lemsip and squash. I, I have tried so many hot beverages. Um, I still like hot Ribena. Hot Ribena, I think, is a winner. Um, Sugar-free, blackcurrant, squash. It's okay. All right, don't, don't at me. I'm trying hard specifically to like match her because I know that I need to lower some other sources of caffeine in my life. Maybe I should up find a replacement. Um, but I cannot help but find it disgusting. I do know that you have to try something 10 times and hate it to start liking it. So I'm, I'm, still, I'm still in it. Still going through the 10. Five, eventually move Rupert into his own bedroom. Oh, moving Rupert into his new room was a plan. The reason there was because we were going to have a baby and we thought it would be easier to put the baby in the room we had already used as a nursery and that didn't work out. We did change Rupert's room into a bit more of a toddler room so he's got his uh, bigger bed now and oh we made a video on it you <laughs> can watch it there's a video uh, ha -ha, a tour of his room here's the room next door which is what the room he was going to go into which he calls his other room Claudia and I call it the little room because it's the smallest room in the house and he does not allow that he calls it the other room and says it's the room his baby sister will sleep in when she comes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, he asked Father Christmas for a baby sister and we told him that babies don't work like that. And he said, Father Christmas does work like that. Moving on. A whole new year, 2024 goals. Claude is really into Ali Abdul videos and his goal setting videos always say that you can only plan for things you personally can control. So for instance, the goal wouldn't be, I'll be able to do a pull up by the end of the year, but instead, I'll move my body in a way that feels good every day. So I'm going to work on setting goals that are more things that I, Jessica, can do and can control. Number one, feeling less guilty about my work-life balance. I have felt really great the last two weeks of being off and not thinking about work a lot and just being with Rupert, just chilling. And instead knowing that actually it's, it's okay. Like I do have other people who also work for me. Like I have a lovely assistant, she's called Paige. For those of you who aren't uh, channel members, channel members get lots of glimpses behind the scenes. If you don't know what channel membership is, you can click the join button down below. Next to the subscribe button, gives you access to the Calvin Fraser Club, which is a monthly behind the scenes kind of little get together club, um, where you see a video that is generally put together of clips behind the scenes of my month. You, you've seen Paige, you've seen Paige. Um, and Claude also works on the channel. And we've got Clara and I just, it's okay. The world's not gonna burn if I take some days off. It's okay. So the guilt is what I need to work on. Detaching, I guess. Just being like, I am in 
my work headspace. It is fine. It's okay. I know that Rupert says he is refusing to do a thing with his mummy right now and he'll only do it with me. But that's tough luck for him because she's right there and she'll do it. Number two, I can't control if we do get pregnant this year. I can control if we try. Number three, today I had a really annoying time. I went to the hospital for what would have been a 15 minute appointment, super quick generally, take less time than that I think, just get in there and out there. They Botox one side of my jaw, helps with my TMJ pain and then helps reduce the number of migraines I get because of the tension across my head and my neck. Um, but instead I had to wait an hour and then get called in to see the consultant, who I don't normally see, who told me that actually no, I'm no longer ever going to get it because nobody is ever getting jaw Botox ever again. It's just all been cancelled. That's it guys, it's done. The Tories have just scrapped it. Cool, cool, cool. He was like, well I can offer you two more sessions and um, we're only ever going to offer people two sessions and then that's it. I know that's how you've been managing your pain for the last four years, but that's it. <laughs> it's like, okay, since we're here in the maxophiliofacial department, I'm assuming you're now going to give me another option? What to do? Like, this was, this was just one option you had for this issue, right? Which is caused by my bad connective tissue and nerve disability. But you must have other options, right? <laughs> And he was like, I mean, you don't look like a very stressed person, so that's good. I guess wise not to open your mouth too wide. Um, eat soft food. Okay, good. I can't eat food again, apparently. I'm just, I can't eat a sandwich. That brings me to, I'm going to look into new ways to sort out this face pain, all right? I can't control, um, I can't control his boss or his boss's boss or his boss's boss or his boss's boss. And I don't think any of them actually made this decision. Um, it's just the Tories trying to privatise the NHS. So let's try some new ways to deal with this. Acupuncture, massage, one of those face rollery thingies. I'm going to try whatever it takes uh, to do something about this. And I shall make a video about it. And. Um, and hopefully then someone else who also goes to see their consultant and leaves crying, as I did, from frustration, gonna give him the satisfaction. I just hate when people look at me and they're like, hi, make up an address. I imagine your life is fine. I mean, I'm not saying my life is terrible, but I also would like the ability to open my mouth. That does seem like something that would upset a person. I, I clearly still have a lot of feelings about this. Number four, other videos I would like to make. So I have had this whole video series idea in my brain for a long time, <laughs> the last six months, and I am gonna make it happen. Um, I've got it all down on paper, I just need to start making it, and it's going to be a series on diagnosis, because so many of you that I meet talk about how my various videos have helped you through your diagnosis process, helped you look into getting a diagnosis, have made you think about where you can go to get help, what you should do, um, steps along the journey, or even things that you can send to family members and friends who either aren't understanding of what you're going through or would like to learn more and need it kind of in a digestible package. So I thought I really want to do a series that's all about diagnosis, the process of diagnosis, um, and along with that, the kind of from the very start, like what are the things that might make you think there's something wrong with your body. Because oftentimes we don't even know. We're like, oh, is that not normal? Oh, I thought I thought everyone's body did that. Starting from that very that very point, uh, moving to like tips on how to go and talk to a doctor. What are the things that you should take to your first appointment? Should you take someone with you? What would you like to prep beforehand and think about? What are the things you need to know? What shouldn't you talk about? Who's to say? That type of things would be in the video. A video on feelings you might have about getting that diagnosis. You can have amazing, great feelings, but you can also have sad feelings and 
all of those are okay and here's why. <laughs> then videos on how to cope with specific symptoms like fatigue. Let's be honest, I mean we might all be suffering from a range of different conditions but fatigue is generally something we've all got. And then of course life after a diagnosis like how do I tell people about this thing I've just been diagnosed with? How does one work this into a conversation? Do I just go back and tell everyone I've ever met? Do I only just start with the new people? Do I have to tell people? When do I have to tell people? When is it appropriate to bring it up in the conversation? And I'd like to do collabs with other different YouTubers as well. I have a lot of ideas, as you can already tell. Um, and I've, I've written them out and I've scripted quite a few of them, but um, if there's anything you would love to see in a diagnosis series, please write it down below in the comments. I kind of want to get the whole thing planned out and get the first chunk of it filmed before I started releasing them so that then everything can be in a really good order and it's nice to work through and move through. Um, I'll also I want to do videos on like the perspective of if you're watching this as the parent of a child who is disabled because obviously that is a very different viewpoint versus coming from it as the person who has the disability. I'm very excited and enthused about this series, so yeah, okay, we should get on to the next one before I just keep talking about this. <laughs> Number five, try to leave the house more. Um, I work from home, I can't drive, my house isn't actually walkable <laughs> to anything I want, I would like to go to. Um, yeah, bit of a bummer. <laughs> I do need to leave the house. I know I said this when we came back from Malaysia last time um, and I was like, oh my God, the freedom. It was incredibly freeing to be able to move around and, and go to things like take Rupert places, just he and I. Whereas right now where we live, I have to get Claudia to drive me places. Um, also because Rupert has to be in a car seat he's not old enough to not be in a car seat so then I can't even get a taxi with him Oy. unless I would like to carry the car seat around which I, I really can't do because <laughs> I'm not strong enough so I'm looking into different ways to do that I was trying to learn to drive again and then because you have to get your driving license renewed every three years if you it's like your provisional license renewed every three years and I have a medical one and um, it's taken a year, a year, for the paperwork to bounce back and forth between my various doctors and the DVLA. Um, yep, because by the time it goes all the way around them and then gets back to the government, the driving agency, they go, oh, this is out of date. We sent this paper out more than a month ago, so too late and this keeps happening this keeps happening so I will probably never get this license back I don't think they want to let me drive <laughs> I'm actually pretty fine at driving I think I'm quite fine you know what in, a, in an apocalypse when it doesn't matter who's legally allowed to drive and who isn't I would not die in a car and I think that means I'm a good driver because I would not drive off a road or crash. I mean the zombies would get me because I can't run faster than a hedgehog but I, at least I can drive kind of illegally. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. Congratulations to you. Um, leave a leave a star emoji like this down in the comments if you did so that's incredibly impressive. Well done. What staying power? Or do you just like my voice and you were busy doing something else? Also understandable. That's okay. Hi friend. I hope you've enjoyed doing whatever it is you're doing. Whether that be cleaning your kitchen, studying. You should probably get back to studying. Putting your makeup on. Do you watch videos where you put your makeup on? Hi. Hi. Hi if that's you. I hope you have an absolutely fabulous 2024. I hope that it is one of the best years of your life 
that it just becomes an incredibly fantastic year. I also hope that 2023 was a good year for you. Um, I'm sorry if it wasn't. Last year was the year of the rabbit. Technically we're still in the year of the rabbit. February 10th is actually Lunar New Year, so we are still in the year of the rabbit. Um, and Claudia got told it was going to be a terrible year for her. <laughs> and um, she's a rabbit. And um, it, it really came true. High five for that prediction, because next year's the year of the dragon, and guess who's the dragon? <laughs> if you're wondering how I'm a dragon, but not born in a year of the dragon, it's because my birthday's in January, okay? The Lunar New Year moves. Thank you so much, pals. I can't wait to find out what five things you are hoping for this year. Please let me know in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you again in a year's time when you come back to see whether those things came true. Well, you probably remember that I am having a tea party to celebrate my 1 million subscribers. Well, a very special email has gone out today to 10 lovely subscribers with an invitation to join me at a tea party in London in March. Thank you to everyone who applied and for writing such really, really beautiful pieces. So many of you wrote really touching things and it was just lovely to read. Very much looking forward to meeting you. Best tea party ever.